Well, hello, friends. Uh, my name is Scott Longyear, coming to you sort of live from Indiana, where it's um, probably in the 30s or 40s today, so nothing spectacular. But I'm a pastor here in Indiana, but my claim to fame, the thing that puts me on the map, is that I am a close personal friend with Beth Keegan, not Ron Keegan at all. I don't know Ron. I don't know him. So I'm just kidding. Ron's a part of our congregation as well as Beth. And so I know they're over with you guys. And so Ron asked me, uh, invited me to share just a, a few um, uh, thoughts with you from Scripture for a devotion for today. And I'm, I'm honored to do that. So, so thanks for that. I just consider it a great honor. So I'm going to be in, uh, let's see where we are here. We are going to be in Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. So as you're turning there, uh, I'll give you a few thoughts. Um, one is... You know, you're in ministry, and I've been in ministry, and here's what I know is that ministry is a fight. It seems like they don't tell you that. Like, they never, they never told me that in Bible college. They never told me going in that ministry was a fight. But once you get in, you realize that, that ministry is a fight, and, it, and it's difficult. And sometimes it's a fight because you have people fighting among themselves. You know, sometimes you have uh, team members that are fighting amongst themselves, or you have uh, congregation members or people that you're working with that are fighting among themselves, or... Sometimes in, the, in the, the best case scenario, if you have a team around you, and I'm blessed to have this great team around me as you are, that are going the same direction, and there's a fight to like take the hill. There's a fight to get things done. Or maybe you fight against the clock. I know you guys are kind of winding down things there in Japan, and, and maybe you feel this little bit of tension of, I'm fighting against the clock. Or maybe you feel a fight and a resistance from, from other people. It's just a, it's, it's almost just a given in ministry that you're going to have a fight or you're going to have resistance. So what do you do with that? Well, the good news is that we're not alone in it, that it's not a new problem. It's not a problem that's just in the U.S. or Japan. It's historically been a problem that there's resistance that comes on, especially the movement of the gospel. There's resistance to the movement of the gospel. So what do you do with it? Well, Acts chapter 14, we drop in at verse 1, and here is what it says. I'm out of the NIV here, I think. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. So they're pushing the gospel forward, just like you're doing. They're pushing the gospel forward. And there in the synagogue, they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. Good news. Kingdom's taking ground. Things are happening and moving forward. Verse 2. But, here comes the resistance. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the Gentiles and they poisoned their minds against the brothers. That is, they poisoned their minds against Paul and Barnabas. So there's the resistance that comes in. There's resistance to the gospel. These guys were on track. Con converts are being made. People are coming to know Jesus. The church is growing. But then all this tension comes in because these guys are stirred up and their minds are poisoned. So Paul and Barnabas, what do they do? Well, what you and I would do, or I'll speak for me, what I would do is say... I think God's calling me somewhere else. It's time to pack it in right here because the resistance is coming on and it's just a little too much. So adios amigos. It's been nice. God is no longer calling me here. But look at verse 3. So that means because, because that was going on. This is what Paul and Barnabas did. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there. And they were speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. I don't know what that does for you, but it blows my mind, but it also encourages me that these guys were coming up against it. And it says, so, in verse 3, the first word, so, that means because they were coming up against it, they weren't hightailing out of town, they weren't catching the next plane back home. Because they're coming up against it, they spent considerable time there. So what do we do when resistance come, comes and a fight comes? Well, pretty plain what happens in verse 3. So here's here's just some, some thoughts on what to do when resistance comes. So I don't know where you're fighting resistance, and you know where you're fighting the resistance, but here's what, we, here's what Paul and Barnabas did, and what you and I should do when resistance comes. Number one, we don't run from the fight. It says they spent time there. They spent time there. Because the resistance came, they spent time there. Like, I don't know if they were thinking about leaving, but maybe they had a conversation. Paul and Barnabas was like, I don't know if we should leave or not. And then the next day, the resistance comes, and they say, Oh, well, there's our answer. We shouldn't leave because the resistance is here. So they spent time there. They spent time. 
Now, I'll take a little bit of liberty, not really in this text, but if you look at the life of, life of Paul, he, he's one that was leaning hard into Jesus. And, and I think that you would find in his life that he spent time pursuing the Father. And that's what you and I need to do, man. As we're spending time, there's resistance comes. Spend time. Are you spending time with the Father? And the greater the resistance, the greater amount of time we should be spending with the Father. Sometimes we think, I have too much to do. I have too much going on. I don't have time to spend time with the Father. You don't have time not to spend time with the Father, especially when things come up. That's why we talk uh, in our congregation here uh, and the people that we, that we speak with, the most important thing that you're doing in your day is spending time one-on-one -on -one with the Father. It's, it's expected of our staff. If our staff on, our, on our staff here, we just made a new rule that said, if you're not spending at least 30 minutes a day on the days that you're working for us, if you're not spending 30 minutes a day quietly with the Father, reading and praying, you're not doing your job. And you'll be docked for it because it's part of your responsibilities. Spend time there. Well, back to the, the scripture in Acts. They spent time there. They spent time, I think, on the problem. You know, sometimes problems aren't a quick fix and we need to spend some time with the problem. Kind of let them marinate. Get some, get some other people's thoughts on it. Like, like, what's going on? What's going on with this? What's, what's your ideas on this? We're kind of running into some resistance here. Spend time there and spend time with the people. I think that's what Paul and Barnabas were doing. They were spending time with the people. Now, I'll be honest with you. That's, that's sometimes difficult for me because I'm I'm big on task. I'm like, let's get it done. Let's get the house gutted. Let's get it torn down. Let's get it rebuilt. Let's get the sermon written. Let's get this done. Let's get this meeting happening. All that, Let's get the task done. And I have to stop and tell myself, I'm not called to spend time with tasks. I'm called to spend time with people. Listen, you weren't called to Japan to spend time with two by fours and wheelbarrows and trucks intense. You're called to Japan to spend time with people. Now, are you doing all of those things and is it necessary that you're rebuilding? Absolutely, but spending time with people, number one priority. You know, when, when we were in um, New Orleans with Samaritan's Purse and rebuilding, I remember on every trip that they, we were there, they said, take time and spend with the homeowner. Homeowner walks up, spend time with the homeowner because they're more important than, than anything else. So let me encourage you. And I know that this put is a big push in these last days, but you're never going to regret the time that you spend with people. Okay? And they're going to remember the conversations that you have with them. They're going to remember the things that you said to them and the things that, that you did with them more than if you built the wall or you put this back together, even though that's part of it. Spend time there with them. That's what Paul and Barnabas did. Second thing that it says that they did, which is there in verse 3, I believe. Yeah, it says that they spoke boldly. They spoke boldly. Not, not cocky, not prideful, but they spoke boldly. And you know what? I think you need to speak boldly to two different, uh, two different people groups. The first people group is yourself. You have to speak boldly to yourself. You have to say to yourself, there's probably mornings you wake up and you're like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know up from down and I can't speak the language and this doesn't seem to be working and this doesn't seem to be working. You need to stop that and you need to speak boldly to yourself and you need to say to yourself, I'm here for a reason. God called me to Japan for a reason. God has me here this day for a reason. I have things to say. God has ordained this moment. Be bold as you're speaking with yourself. Secondly, you need to be bold when you're talking to other people. This may be the last chance you have to talk to them, especially as you're winding your days down. This may be the last conversation that they have with them. Now, maybe you'll close some deals. Maybe you'll lead some people to Christ, and maybe the season is not for that. It's a season of just kind of spreading the seeds, right? It's not the harvest yet for some people. Maybe you're just spreading seeds, but be bold as you talk to them. Listen, don't leave. Don't leave Japan with regret. Don't leave Japan saying, I wish I would have talked to, I wish I would have said, I wish I would have explained the gospel to this person. Don't leave with regret. Be bold as you talk to other people. All right, so he says, spend time there, be bold. And then here's another thing. He says that God confirmed all this by letting them do miracles. So when resistance comes on, 
and you're coming in resistance in the next 10 days, maybe you should ask God for miracles, maybe more miracles. I know Ron and I talk a lot, and he's like, man, i got to tell you all the stuff that's going on over here. There's these great miracles that are happening, tremendous things that are, that are going on. Listen, I, I think God is doing miracles through you. Now, I, I don't know what kind of church background you're from, and, and maybe you uh, kind of lean towards the miraculous, or maybe you kind of steer away from it, you know, and the supernatural and all. But here's the fact of the matter, guys, is that you're working miracles in Japan. You are rebuilding lives in Japan. You go talk to some of your homeowners, you know what they'll say. They'll say that you're a miracle worker. And you'll say, oh no, all we did was a clean out. All we did was gut this place. All we did was mud this out. All we did was rebuild it. No, no, no. To them in their lives, you are a miracle worker. You're rebuilding their family. You're rebuilding their entire lives, man. God is doing miracles. God's doing miracles. And I know there are tons of stories Ron and I have stories when we were in New Orleans, and once Ron was in a house. Ron, I, don't, I think this was a trip maybe that I wasn't on, um, or maybe, I don't know if it was New Orleans or it was Mississippi, somewhere you, where you were, and you can tell them the story later about finding the box uh, for the lady, the only thing that she wanted out of, out of her house. And I remember we had done a complete gut out on, on one house in New Orleans, and this woman with two young kids and her husband were so overwhelmed with what they had done because it was all on them. Um, she insisted that we stay later than we were supposed to stay and that she make us lunch. And so we were out in their front yard eating a homemade, some of the greatest food I've ever had, in the pouring down rain because she wanted to do something nice for us because we were miracle workers in her life. Man, that's what you do when the resistance comes. You say, I'm expecting God to do a miracle in this, so I know that he's going to do this, going to do it. So Paul and Barnabas stick around Iconium because the pressure comes on. That's why they're sticking around, and you guys are going into different pressure points, and you stick around. Some of you are leaving Japan, and you're going somewhere else where pressure is and resistance is, and you stick around because of that. But they would eventually leave. Their, their time would be eventually be over, and your time is going to be over soon. Here's the good thing. The kingdom is way bigger than you. <laughs> I know sometimes we think that we have to be all and, and do all, but the kingdom's, the kingdom's way bigger than you are or I am. And somebody's going to come and they're going to pick up where you left off. And somebody's going to stick around. And somebody's going to speak boldly. And somebody's going to do miracles because the kingdom is going to continue to move. So you'll have resistance. You're probably going to have resistance today. But when you do, spend time. Spend time. Make sure you're spending time with the Father. Spend time with the situation, but spend time with the people. Speak boldly to yourself. Speak boldly into the lives of people. And look out, because I believe God's going to do some great miracles. So listen, it's my, it's my privilege just to, to bring you a few words from stateside. Let me encourage you. Keep doing the great work. Thank you for the stuff that you're doing for the kingdom in Japan. And may God greatly bless you as you go out and you speak boldly, even today, to the people that you'll run into. Have a fantastic day, full of miracles. God bless you.